With sales of crossovers and SUVs booming, Jeep has been eagerly awaiting a running mate for its popular Cherokee to cash in on demand. Enter the 2017 Jeep Compass, not only a replacement for the outgoing Compass and Patriot, but a credible threat to the monsters of this class from American and Japanese brands. How does it look? I really like the sharp lines and neat proportions of the compass, far better than the polarizing and needle-nosed Cherokee, that's for sure. From the profile view, I see a nicely scaled back version of the handsome Grand Cherokee, a classic Jeep design. With that said, this all gray paint scheme doesn't do the vehicle any favors. Jeep offers brighter hues and a contrasting black roof that make even the lower trims much more attractive for anyone but the ultra conservative shoppers. How's the storage? Now, one of the things that pops out about Compass when you start measuring it is that it's actually about a half a size down from the competition. That reduction is most acutely felt where it comes to cargo capacity, where the Honda CR-V and the Toyota RAV4 both have about 10 cubic feet more space. It's still fine when it comes to daily hauling, as our luggage set from away can demonstrate, but if you want something with the absolute most amount of room, you're gonna wanna look elsewhere. There's not much clever in the cabin packaging of the Compass. Driver and front passenger get a cup holder each, a standard door pocket, and a little cubby under the armrest. There's a netted pocket next to the transmission tunnel, but there's really nothing to see here. Move along. Is it roomy? Perhaps engineers compromised space for bottles and backpacks in the main cabin to be sure human beings were well looked after. Especially in this model with no sunroof, I've got plenty of headroom for my six foot five inch frame with no problem getting settled comfortably behind the wheel. Same thing in the back seats, where leg, head, and elbow room are all pretty reasonable. How does the interior feel? Now these cloth and vinyl seats are standard equipment on this mid-level latitude trim compass. And I think they're a pretty good balance between durability, washability, and being fairly interesting to look at. Looking forward, there's quite a lot of black plastic in front of me, as you'd expect, but it is brightened up pretty nicely by this big 8.5 inch touchscreen. Now, I've gotta call this out, that this compass, like the compass before it, doesn't actually have a compass in it. Yes, there's navigation and I can see direction of travel, but it feels like a missed opportunity to me. Is it well equipped? The Compass Latitude gets a couple of features that most shoppers will like as standard, like remote entry with keyless start, a backup camera, Bluetooth streaming to the stereo, a leather wrapped steering wheel, and of course, four wheel drive with Jeep's select terrain multi-mode system. There are options to see too. I really like the 17 inch wheels and I dig the navigation group package that gets you the bigger screen, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and you know, navigation. Here in Michigan, the cold weather pack, including heated seats and steering wheel and all season floor mats, seems like a good way to spend 695 bucks. How's the infotainment system? I've got no complaints with Uconnect and this large touchscreen interface. Bugginess seems to have been mostly worked out of the software at this point, and the large selection of apps gives every driver a lot of options for customization. Is it a good daily driver? So there's still a perception out there, I think, that Jeeps overall have a rough ride. And that's really not true with the Compass. Though it's maybe not quite as sanguine as something like a CRV. Again, I hate to keep bringing that up, but it is probably the top thing in the class. Uh, the ride quality is really, really good. One thing that I don't love is that wind noise at highway speeds is higher than I'd like. You really have to crank the stereo to get over it. 
Where Jeep has a clear competitive advantage with the Compass is the ability of this thing to go off-road and really handle it. Now, I haven't done a lot of off-roading in Detroit, but I was just recently out in Moab with Jeep and I drove Trailhawk versions of the Compass off-road and, and the truth is that it's got a ton of capability. Anybody who needs that sort of thing a lot of the time is gonna wanna at least consider it. Now, I've mentioned it before, but the Compass is actually a little bit smaller than a lot of stuff that it would technically compete with. Compared to a Rogue or a RAV4, it's about eight or 10 inches shorter in overall length. And that helps it in a couple of ways. For people who aren't taking it off-road but are more urbanites, you've got a lot easier chance of maneuvering it in tight parking spaces, parking garages, and things like that, not to mention city streets. Is it fun to drive? I'd love to answer this question in a manual transmission version of the Compass, honestly, because I don't really like the interaction of the 2.4 liter engine in this nine speed automatic transmission. Now, the output here is 180 horsepower and 175 pound feet of torque, which in theory should be enough to make this feel pretty peppy. But the reality is that, especially when you're already at speed, the transmission just doesn't want to kick down, so it feels like it's got less power than it actually has. And I hate to keep bringing this up, but honestly, the, the Trailhawk versions or the off-road equipped versions of this vehicle can be entertaining when you drive them off-road. In the real world, it does feel very vanilla. How's the fuel economy? This 4x4 Compass is good for 30 miles per gallon on the highway, but just 22 in the city. The combined rating of 25 MPG is a few points below what you'll get in an all-wheel drive version of the Nissan Rogue or Honda CRV. How much is it? Jeep will sell you a no-frills front driver compass for a little over 20 grand. And our 4x4 mid-level version is a nice deal with a starting MSRP of $24,295. Optioned as you see it though, the price for this Jeep rises to nearly 32 grand, and loaded out versions of the Trailhawk or Limited trims can tickle $37,000. What are the negatives? This Compass is so vastly improved over the car that came before it that it almost deserves a new name. Still, the big time sellers that compete with it, especially from recent home run hitting companies like Honda and Subaru, are a little bit more refined and they are gonna be easier to live with day to day. Who should buy it? This Compass totally shines for buyers who really need a little bit of off-road advantage. The small Jeep has more potential on rough terrain than mere crossovers, while still being appropriately sized for those who live in urban areas or the suburbs. Hey guys, thanks for watching this Why Buy video. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. We love to hear from you. And be sure to check in every Thursday when we have new Why Buys. We have lots of interesting cars coming up. We'd love to have you subscribe to our channel and check in weekly.